Welcome to the Atmosphere Church channel. On behalf of all of us here at Atmosphere, thank you for watching. We pray that this message will touch your heart and change your life. Regardless of what you believe, where you come from, or what questions you might have, you are welcome here. Our desire is to help lead you in experiencing God by following Jesus. If you want to find out more information about us, head over to our website at atmosphere.church. And don't forget to click below to subscribe. Enjoy the message. What's up, guys? Pastor Jim Cruz here, lead pastor of Atmosphere Church. And let me say once again, thank you for inviting us into your living room or from wherever you're watching. We are so grateful that you are a part of our church fam. Hey, if you're on Facebook Live or YouTube Live, you know the drill. We want to hear from you. We don't want you to just watch today's talk. We want to connect with you. And the best way we can connect with you is if you leave us a comment. So please type out today. Let's let's hear from you about how we could be praying for you. Maybe you're going through something, maybe a family member is going through something, just type out that prayer request and how we might be praying for you this week. Well, today is the final talk in our series that we've simply entitled Jonah. And what we've learned from this ancient story is it has a relevant message because there's a little Jonah in all of us. And in today's final talk in our series, we have a special guest speaker who has spoken at Atmosphere before. His name is Pastor Samuel Laws. He's one of the lead pastors up at a church in San Ramon, California called Brave Church. He pastors up there with his dad, Darren Laws. And both of these guys have been a huge blessing to Atmosphere Church, and we can't thank them enough for all of the ways that they have been a part of this entire movement that we've experienced over these last three years. So get those emojis going on Facebook, put those heart buttons out there, those like buttons, and give a warm Atmosphere welcome to Pastor Samuel Laws. Take it away, Samuel. Hey, Atmosphere Church, it is so great to be with you in person and online. Thanks for joining us today. Um, I love Pastor Jim and Tara, and it is an honor to serve you guys and to be a part of your community. Um, I, I just can't wait to see what God does in this new season. Hey, it's almost Easter. Hope you're inviting people. Hope you're ready uh, to celebrate that Jesus is risen. Today, we're concluding a four-week talk series looking at the story of Jonah. And we're going to get right into it. We're looking at chapter four. If you want to go there in your Bibles, you can follow along. Um, but remember from last week where we left off, if you missed it, you know, you can go back and check it out. But Jonah, he has just preached what many would say is the worst sermon in the Bible, and it led to the greatest revival. And, and so now we pick back up discovering how Jonah, now Jonah the revivalist, actually felt about what just happened. And this may be one of the biggest surprises in the book, like bigger than Jonah the prophet running away from God, bigger than being swallowed by a fish. Look at what it says, okay? Jonah chapter four, starting in verse one. It says, but to Jonah, this seemed very wrong. And he became angry. He prayed to the Lord. Isn't this what I said, Lord, when I was still at home? that it was what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish. I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger, abounding in love, and a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, is it right for you to be angry? Jonah had gone out and he sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter and he sat in the shade and he waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord provided a leafy plant and it made it grow over Jonah to give shade for his head to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the plant. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm which chewed the plant so that it withered. And when the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint. He wanted to die. And he said, it would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the plant? 
It is, he said, and I'm so angry I wish I were dead. But the Lord said, you've been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and it died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left and also many animals. Um, Quick note on those last comments. Many think when it refers to people who don't know their right hand from their left, it's referring to the children of Nineveh. And it's noteworthy that God mentions the animals. God cares about every living being. He cares about all of his creation. But then notice this story ends with a question. This last question that God asks Jonah is one of the most significant lines in the entire story. In fact, it's probably the key verse in the entire book of Jonah. God leaves Jonah and us with a question. Should I not be concerned for this great city? Should I not be concerned for every person that has not found life to the fullest through relationship with me. The title of today's talk is Givers and Takers. And I wonder if you, can, if you think of yourself more as a giver or a taker, okay? Most of us probably don't see ourselves as takers or, or receivers, but the truth is we're all somewhere on this spectrum of being a giver or a taker. And in the context of Jonah, we're talking about giving and receiving grace. The story of Jonah shows us what a generous grace giver God is. From the sailors, the evil city, and the runaway prophet Jonah. Through this, what we ultimately find is God's heart for you and me. It's like no matter how far we run, God just won't give up on people. No matter what you've done, no matter what we've got, how how far we've gone in the opposite direction, God just doesn't give up on us. And Jonah has a problem with that. Here he is at the end of the story. He's sitting on this hill hoping for hate. He hopes for hate. He desires judgment. And Jonah doesn't care about these people. He has no grace for them. He's mad at God for giving it. And so Jonah, he he says he'd rather die than be part of this great redemption story. And so then God, he starts asking some questions, but God, he's not asking these questions looking for answers. He's making a point. He's trying to get Jonah and us thinking. The curtains fall, the lights come on, and we're left with this question. Should I not be concerned with that great city? Here's here's the big idea that we're going to talk about today. The tension that the story of Jonah reveals is that we all like receiving grace, but it's harder to give it. See, see, we're okay with grace when when, when, when it's going to people that we like and that we're okay with, but not when it goes to people that we don't like. Um, Have you ever been driving and maybe you were late for work and you're distracted and and then you realize that you gotta change lanes or you're gonna miss your exit and you really can't be late. Maybe you've got an important meeting or you've been late before and you just can't be late again. And so you see an opening, You're, you're looking over, you see your exit, you see an opening and you take it and you accidentally cut someone off. In our minds, we think, Oh, it, it, you know, it's, it's not so bad. I mean, I didn't mean to. I was just trying to make my exit. I'm sure they understand. But we've all been the one driving when the person cuts us off. And how many of us actually start making excuses for the, for the other person? Uh, you know, oh, they must be running late. Maybe it's an emergency. No, no, we don't do that. We get upset. Even though when it's our fault, the first place we go is thinking they'll understand and, we, and we, we make excuses, we give grace to ourselves. We all like receiving grace, but it's harder to give it. Or, or maybe you were the one throwing a party or an event or a social gathering and maybe you forgot to invite someone and it's too late, you realized afterwards people are posting photos on social media, you know that this person that you forgot to invite is gonna see them and but, but you think, oh, they'll understand, you know, it wasn't on purpose. They probably just forgot. Maybe, maybe they, they had a lot going on. It was a lot to organize. And then on the other end, you're the person who got missed, who got forgotten about. And, and you start to wonder, man, they must not value my, our friendship the way I do. Like, did, did, they, did I do something or say something to offend them? What happened? Why didn't I get invited? 
Maybe I should unfriend them. Maybe I should start downgrading that relationship. Like that's where we go. Or, or how about at work? Maybe you're the boss. You've got a, a lot on your plate. Uh, you keep needing to cancel meetings or move things around because there's some stuff that's coming up that you just have no control over. You can't move it. It's unexpected. But it's messing with everyone else's schedule. And, and so you think, well, I'm sure they'll understand. You know, this isn't happening because I don't value their time or I don't respect them. It's beyond my control. But as the team member, you're thinking, man, they must be so disorganized. Like, this is really throwing off my morning. Like, what are they up to anyways? Like, are they, are they even doing their job? Maybe they just went golfing. Here's the deal. None of us are perfect people. You know, turn to the person you're watching with right now and just say, you're not perfect and neither am I. You're not perfect and neither am I. And because we're not perfect, we will all need grace. And the challenge is, we all like receiving grace, but it's harder to give it. And so today, we're going to look at three keys to being a grace giver. If you're taking notes, three keys to being a grace giver. And the first one is this. You can't give what you haven't received. You cannot give what you haven't received. You, you can't give time you don't have. You can't give money you don't have. And you can't give grace that you don't have. Giving always starts with receiving. Uh, I wonder if you remember the first time that you received grace. I'll never forget the first time that I was shown grace and, and really just began understanding the concept. Um, I was in kindergarten, which might sound kind of young, right? Like you're like, is this guy making the story up? But seriously, that's how powerful grace is. I have never forgotten this moment. Now, I was talking in class when I wasn't supposed to be talking and my teacher, she put my name on the chalkboard. I don't even know if they have chalkboards anymore, but that, that was like strike one, okay? It, it was actually kind of shaming because it's this dramatic moment in front of everybody in the class and she's putting your name up there. But, but anyways, then I was coming in to the classroom from recess later that day and, and I was in a hurry to get to my desk and I guess my struggle with patience started young because I nudged this girl in front of me trying to rush to my desk and I don't know why I did that. It wasn't personal, but my teacher, she had eyes on me, okay? She saw what I did. And so, so then I got a check mark next to my name on the chalkboard. And, and when that happened, that meant that the teacher, she wasn't, she, she wasn't um, it, was, it was no longer playtime. Like she was gonna talk to my parents when they picked me up from school. And that scared the you know what out of me because I, that meant I was in big trouble and it's not like that had ever happened before. I didn't know what was gonna happen. The rest of the day, my, my palms were sweaty. I was scared because this teacher put the fear of God in us. Like, I'm gonna tell your parents. And, and so who knew what would happen? All I knew is uh, I was scared of what my mom was gonna do when she found out. So my mom picks me up from school and I, I see her talking to my teacher. And then we walk to the car and she doesn't say anything. So I don't say anything. Like, I'm not gonna make the first move here. So I waited and then we stopped at the grocery store and I was quiet. We walked the aisles, we got our groceries and then we were in line at the checkout and I saw the movie Aladdin on VHS. It was for sale. And actually it wasn't, it was the sequel to Aladdin, Return of Jafar. And this was like straight to VHS, okay? And so I picked it up and I looked at it and, and my mom did something that I would never have seen coming. She put it in the cart and she said she was gonna buy it. And I didn't know what was happening. I mean, this seemed really strange. But I waited until we got to the car in case she changed her mind. Like maybe she forgot I got my name on the board. I don't know. And so we got to the car and then I asked my mom, I said, mom, why did you buy me that movie when I got in trouble at school? And she said, are you sorry for what you did? And I said, yeah. And she said, I could see how sorry you were. And that was enough. You, you learned your lesson. In other words, my mom saw my heart. She knew me. She saw that I was repentant. So why punish? You know, in God's kingdom, discipline is about love, not punishment. And so my, my mom didn't withhold doing something nice for me because she thought she had to teach me a lesson. No, she knew in my heart that, that she, she saw that I had learned the lesson. And so now I was really blessed by grace that day, right? All those years ago, I was so blessed. And looking back over the years, it's been such a beautiful reminder for me. It stood out as, as how God's heart is for us. 
God doesn't withhold good gifts from his children to punish them. Jesus said in Matthew 7, verse 11, if you, then though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? The more filled with grace we become, with the grace of God, the more we have this filling our lives, the more we have to give to the world around us. But you can't give what you haven't received. Look, Jonah, he received God's grace in the belly of the fish. He got a second chance. And it was only because of that that he was able to go and give a message of grace to Nineveh. Was his heart in it? Didn't look like it. Doesn't seem like it. But the point is, it is only by God's grace when, that we have anything to give, which is why everything we give to others needs to start with a recognition that that is God who has given us life, that is God who has given us provision, that is God who has given us the ability to give to others. And when we understand grace, even our sacrifices seem small because we know it's only because of the sacrifice of Christ that we have something to give, that, that we find ourselves in a position to extend grace. That's the gospel. So if you wanna be a grace giver, think about all the grace that you have been given. Recognize it. Let that be the first headline that you live under each day. One of the things that I've noticed in life is that people who take, that struggle with being more of a taker, uh, these, these people are usually people who have had a lot taken from them. And, and if you've had a hard life, then your fears are probably understandable. But if you wanna live with a generous mindset and be able to give grace freely, here's what you need to know to get free from that. If you accept Jesus, what you're accepting is this truth, that no matter how much is taken from you, it will never come close to outweighing what you've received in Christ. That is more grace than we can fathom. So number one, you can't give what you haven't received. And number two, turn unholy anger into acceptance. Turn unholy anger into acceptance. Did you know that God gets angry? God's anger is often referred to as his wrath or the wrath of God. And this is how God feels about injustice. This is anytime God acts lovingly against sin. This is how God feels about evil. And when God gets angry, it's for a good reason. God has acted consistently in a holy anger throughout history. But, but that's not what Jonah's doing. That's not the kind of anger bubbling up in Jonah. Jonah was full of an unholy anger. Jonah thought that he knew better than God. And in a verse, in verse one, it says that he thought that God was very wrong. And he, and he basically said, God, I knew this would happen because you're too nice. Have you ever gotten upset because you just felt like someone was being too nice? And I'm not talking about when they lack wisdom or boundaries. You know, I'm, I'm talking about when someone says they don't deserve a second chance or, or they're just gonna blow it again or they're, they're black or they're white or they're brown and I know how they do things in that culture. These are real problems. This is the kind of anger that Jonah felt towards this whole situation and it wasn't right, it was unholy. And now he's angry at God for being so slow to send destruction and so slow to anger and so slow to judgment. It says in verse four, but the Lord replied, is it right for you to be angry? See, the ending of Jonah confronts us all to compare God's heart with our own. Can we offer a holy acceptance to people who make mistakes differently than we do? Or when we're honest, do we say, no, no, not them, God, not them. 120,000 people lived in Nineveh and God cared about each and every one of them as much as he cares about us and Israel and the entire world. But would Jonah and will we, will we ask God for the grace to turn our unholy anger, the things that frustrate us about others into a holy acceptance of people? God can work with that. So you can't love someone until you're first willing to accept them as they are. Now, of course, the other half of this acceptance is to say, hey, we love people enough to love them where they're at, but also not to leave them there. So we can't take this to an extreme, right? 
I'm not saying we accept the sin, okay? God doesn't do that, but he always offers acceptance to the sinner. Uh, Here's a, a great heart check question for each of us. If we wanna see just how well we're doing when it comes to accepting people as God does, is there anyone in your life that if you're really honest, you'd rather God teach them a lesson than forgive them right now? Like you'd rather them hit rock bottom or get what they deserve, like secretly or not so secretly in your heart, you hope they learn a thing or two. Because it would satisfy your anger, but God would say, that's not what we do on Team Jesus. <laughs> like when it comes to people, our way is to radically accept and pray for repentance and offer grace instead of judgment. Which leads to our last point. If you want to be a grace giver, At some point, you have to do this. Number three, care enough to join the cause. Care enough to join the cause. Did you know that the book of Jonah isn't the first time that we hear about Jonah? He's actually mentioned in the Bible before Jonah, before God called him to deliver this message to Nineveh, before he ran from his calling, before he got swallowed by a fish, before all of this in 2 Kings, God gave Jonah a different prophecy. Except this one was a message he, was to get, he would get excited to deliver. Like God told Jonah that he was going to give favor to Israel. And so Jonah was all in for that message. I mean, that message would have made Jonah famous. Like that message made Jonah the guy who, who if he was out on the town, if he visited, he's at a restaurant with friends or whatever, his tab got covered. Jonah got free drinks for life. Jonah was popular. And Jonah's first big word from God, you know, it it was a win for the whole country. And so Jonah knew that this one would kill his approval rating. Like like if it worked, if, if God was gracious, his friends, maybe even his family would say, what were you thinking, Jonah? This is our enemy. These people are horrible. And so Jonah really was confronted with a decision. Was he gonna live for his cause or the cause of his nation's or his nation's success, or their survival, or is he gonna trust and live for God's cause of bringing grace to the world? Christian author Jerry Bridges, he wrote, if we are to succeed in living by grace, we must come to terms with the fact that God is sovereign in dispensing his gracious favors, and he owes us no explanation. When his actions do not correspond with our system of merits. Jonah was a grace taker, not a grace giver. What will we be? Do I only wanna keep grace for my own people? People who look like me, have preferences like me, people that I'm comfortable with? Or will we join the cause of Christ and help bring a message of grace to the world? This Easter season is a time that we set aside in particular to reflect and celebrate what Jesus did for us on the cross. We celebrate and we recognize that all year long, but this is a special time that we set aside. It's also a time people are uniquely open to an invitation to church. You know, maybe you've heard the label CEO, right? Christmas and Easter only. Hey, I love those people. If you're a CEO, we want you here. If that's you and you're listening to this talk, good for you. Like that's three times this year. But our hope is, that as people find Jesus, the spirit of God would give them a hunger for more. Will you join the cause this Easter season? Will you begin now praying for two to three people that you can personally invite to join us this Easter and hear the message of Jesus? Will you join the cause and be a grace giver? I was in eighth grade when 9-11 happened. One of the things that I remember from that time was how packed the churches were. After that tragic event, people were just running to church. And people have asked during this pandemic, this tragic pandemic that that we're living through, why hasn't it had the same effect? Why aren't the churches filled? You know, I, I believe that it has. I believe more people have been connecting to church through online ministry and more people have been hearing the gospel than any other time in my life. But listen, church, it's on us now. It's on us to join the cause. It's on us to extend the invitation. It's on us to bridge the gap from online back into community. 
What, what if we were radical grace givers? What kind of impact would that have on our neighborhoods, with our coworkers, with our family? What, what if we were the kind of people that actually gave people who cut us off in traffic the benefit of the doubt? Giving grace means giving help to undeserving and deserving people. It's not giving a pass every now and then. That, that's apathy. It's actively assuming the best when we didn't get invited, when they forgot to respond to the text, when they were late on delivering their part of the project or they showed up empty-handed. You know, what, what if we thought more about how we can lighten the load of others than getting what we want? See, see we've talked a lot about Jonah's faults these last few weeks because, because there's so much that we can learn from them. But you know what's an amazing thought? You know, most scholars believe that Jonah wrote this book, which means when the story ended, God kept working on his heart. So much so that when he wrote his story, he didn't hide the ugly. He, he let himself be the bad guy. He told this story to help others find their way to becoming a grace giver. Maybe, maybe you're here and you feel more like Jonah. Maybe, maybe it's hard for you to see the best in others or love the people you don't like, or the people that offend you. If you're ready to move beyond taking grace for yourself and being part of the solution, then your next step is really simple. The good news that Jesus talked about is embodied in a person, which is Jesus. And this great message is summarized in a word, and that word is grace. It's an invitation, just like the one that God extended to Nineveh. It's a second chance. This invitation, it goes like this. I know all about you, the best things you've done and the worst, and I want you to follow me. But if you say yes, if you commit your life to me and my ways and my value system and my truth, this truth that I give you, I will lead you away from your sin. And I won't forget what you've done. Grace doesn't mean it's forgotten. It means even though I remember it all, I love you anyways. Receive my grace and become a grace giver. Now Jesus says, come and follow me. Let's pray. God, I pray for every person that is joining us right now. Lord, I pray that if they are at a place of, of wanting to receive your grace for the first time, to make you Lord of their life, God, I pray that you would meet them right now as they say yes to you as they say yes to Jesus, yes to receiving your grace, being filled with your grace, God. I pray for this moment. And God, I pray that we would then be generous with that, that we would extend these invitations. God, I pray that we would have a heart for people who don't know you. Give us your heart. Even if we even had a, a fraction of your heart for people, if we even felt uh, just a, a small percent of what you feel, for the people around us that don't know you. God, we would be overwhelmed, but God, I pray that you would give us even a portion of that this season, that, you, that we would be the bridge back to your church, back to community, back to your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for tuning in today to another great message from Atmosphere Church. If this message is spoken to your heart, would you take a moment and share it with your friends? You can connect with us on Spotify, iTunes, Podcast, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Simply do a search for Atmosphere Church through these various platforms, and then click the follow or subscribe button. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you should see it right below this video. It's another great way for us to be able to stay connected with you. If you live in the Southern California area, we would love to invite you to be part of our family. For more information about our church, go to our official webpage at atmosphere.church. Finally, if this service and our other resources bless you, would you consider giving back to Atmosphere Church to support not only these things, but also support the creation of even more resources for you? To make a donation, simply go to our website and click on the tab that says Give. Your gift of any amount is greatly appreciated. Until next time, we pray that you will keep the faith, spread the hope, and live the love.